This is Johnny trying the new Trixie Cosmetics Solid Pink Disco Collection. Cue the stars. We're gonna have some fun today, talking about the new Trixie Mattel collection, some life updates, and the kind of exclusive content you guys can expect from Kevin and I on the Beautiful Unbothered channel. But before we do that, let's crack this bad boy open, see what we got, pick an eyeshadow palette, and then while we're doing our makeup, we can gossip. I'm gonna do my brows, prep my lids, and be right back. And the eyes are prepped. I use the Rare Beauty Brow Pencil and the Natasha Denona Concealer. Is anybody surprised? Before I dive into so much I wanna talk to you guys about about. Let's just open the Solid Pink Disco Collection, dive in, let's see what we're working with. So this is the entire PR box, very, very beautiful. This is available on Trixie Cosmetics, which I really love that Trixie sells the whole PR box, because if you're a super fan, like Kevin and I, I mean, this is amazing. But we have two eyeshadow palettes. This one is the Solid Pink Disco, the Disco After Dark. I know this is more pinky and this is more nighttime. We have two cream highlighters, lashes that look <laughs> Stunning. And a lip gloss. I'm most excited to try the powder eyeshadows because I've never tried Trixie's powder eyeshadow formula. Kevin has, I haven't. I obviously love Trixie Cosmetics. I talk about it all the time. I'm gonna be using some of my other faves, but I've never used the powder eyeshadows. Here we have the inside of the Solid Pink Disco Palette. I'm almost positive this is a brand new formula for her, this pressed glitter. And this, look at the packaging, is the Disco After Dark Palette. These are all the shades swatched from the Solid Pink Disco Palette. I gotta say, the mattes are like butter. These these three pink mattes, this is one swipe. And the Shade Boots and Cats, which is the press glitter, it definitely doesn't swipe in one solid thing. I had to kind of press this on the arm. So we'll see if we have fallout with this when we do the eyes. And then this is the Disco After Dark palette swatch. This pressed silver glitter is stunning. And then these two foil shadows, I'm not even kidding you, swatched like Natasha Denona shadows. So maybe I spoke too soon thinking I was only gonna use the pink. I might dip into both here or try to, just to give you an idea of both palettes. But either way, I know I'm gonna start right here with 12 inch single from the Solid Pink Disco Palette. There is a little kickback, but that's normal. I don't really care about fallout as long as it gives me color. All right, let's blend this out in the crease. Woo, all right. Okay, wow, whoa, whoa. We're getting a lot of payoff. <laughs> So how are you guys? I'm so happy to be making this video, I can't even tell you. This video is gonna be a love letter to you and a love letter to Kevin. I'm not exaggerating when I tell you guys, you, the podcast audience, are my favorite people that have ever followed me on any social media platform. It was always my dream to have a podcast and I started at the beginning of the year. Short form content is really unpredictable and there's really no security in it. And also it's not really what I always wanted to do. I wanted to do what Kevin and I are doing. I mean, even that was the start of my comedy skits. I loved entertaining people. And I started the podcast because with the invention of short form, I really felt like long form educational content or just diving in really deep into beauty kind of was dying. And at that point, I really felt like I had been pigeonholed into my comedy skits and short form content and I wanted to make longer videos. So I started doing it and then as you guys know, if you've been watching the podcast for a long time, I brought Kevin on because Kevin quit Sephora and he told me he quit Sephora and I was like, get your ass over to my house because now we can talk shit. And the beginning of this year was really rough. Like I started to hit a wall with just doing the same thing over and over and over again. And you guys know Casey and I are older. We're 31 years old, we were looking for a house and we knew we wanted to start looking for a house. And I'll be completely honest with you, short form content pays one one millionth what long form does and you don't develop a relationship with the audience. So my skits would just reach millions of people and Yes, a lot of people love them, but it was a mixture of people seeing me for the first time and just being like, ew, what's this? And why are you wearing makeup? And I love doing the podcast in the beginning of the year, but the other part that started to get really difficult at the beginning of the year was I was really lonely. Like I'm home all day, every day doing this. And I'm just not somebody like a content creator, or influencer or whatever that thrives on being alone all the time. I don't like it. And when Kevin came over and we hadn't seen each other in a while and it was so organic and I give him so much credit because I really threw him to the wolves. He had never really been on camera before, but our friendship of years at that point and our chemistry and our comedy, we literally share a brain, just leapt off the screen. And I was like, I don't want this to go away. 
stay. I wanna keep doing this. And that's why I brought him on. The reason we're going to start posting content like this on this channel is because, to be honest with you, my other channel, my Johnny Ross channel, the algorithm is kind of so mucked up at this point from my comedy skits because obviously they do very well and I'm very grateful and I'm not gonna stop doing them. I love doing them, but the other kinds of content that almost probably around 80% of my subscribers also watch on that channel are other comedy accounts or just crazy accounts. They're not really all that interested in beauty as much as you guys are. And as you know, Kevin and I are psychos about beauty and we just wanna share this style with people that wanna see it. And you guys know us so well. I can't even explain it. I am already so much more comfortable filming this video knowing that I'm talking to you guys over here than I am over there. So we plan on doing tutorials and reviews, challenge videos, reaction videos, crazy videos, both Kevin and I, obviously I wanna have Kevin on as many of these videos as I can. Kevin does work, so we can't quite film as much as me, but I'm hoping in the new year that that is gonna change. Oh God, this blended like butter. Look at this, look at this. All right, now I'm gonna deepen things up with the hustle and we're just gonna deepen up the outer corner. But this entire year, as stressful as it's been, I got married, Casey and I bought a house. The podcast has been my favorite thing to do every single week. Not to only finally get to be of what I feel like is showing you who I actually am, my authentic self, but it allowed me to really like reunite with Kevin. Every single time he comes over to film is my favorite day the week. Okay, these mats are gagging me. I don't know. People have told me about Trixie's shadows. I've heard that they can be chalky sometimes. Like I've even dipped into some other palettes I've gotten sent in PR. And I was like, okay, but I'm super curious because these are like velvety smooth. I know Kevin is more experienced than me with using Trixie's powder eyeshadows. This is also the really cool part about the exclusive content during the week is now on the next episode, I can ask Kevin on the air about the palettes and talk about these videos. And if you guys watch them, you'll be up to date on the tea. So you gotta make sure you watch these videos. All right, I think I'm gonna go in with Hot Pants, which is the pink foiled shimmer. And I'm just gonna press this on the inside of the lid. Okay, that's really pretty. She's not blinding, but she's also not like the half shimmer you know, Kevin and I are always dragging. I gotta layer this silver shimmer. This is Silver Fox, cause this is the one I'm telling you, swatched like a Natasha shadow. Look at that dipped in, look at that, Tin Man. Okay, I'm gonna press over on top of that pink. I just wanted to give it a base with the pink. Holy crap, guys. Another big motivator for us with this channel is just because when I think you make short form content, most of the time, every single comment you get is from somebody new because your short form content is always reaching new people or in my case with the comedy skits, they do extremely well and they reach a lot of different people. And every single time someone's commenting, it's someone new, it's someone I don't know. And while that's amazing to get discovered in that way, what is getting discovered if you then can't build a relationship with anybody? Where with the podcast, I'm not kidding you, Kevin and I recognize some of you guys that comment every episode. And I got so worried in the beginning of this year after doing this for a while that no matter what I did, no one wanted to get to know me and build a relationship with me. And a lot of the reception was just like, put a towel back on your head and be funny. Like you guys and Kevin like saved me this year. I was really in a horrible spot, which you might have been able to tell like the end of this spring, beginning of this summer. And I was so burned out and so, tired of feeling just like a dancing monkey of doing the same thing over and over again and not able to build a community. But the blessing that was Kevin coming on and not only getting to build a audience of long form viewers that know me so well, but to know us and for me to give Kevin this opportunity and him and I get to be completely ourselves. I am never more myself than when I'm with him filming that podcast and reflecting on it, it's almost like a bigger life raft than I ever could have asked for. So I'm serious when I tell you from the bottom of my heart, I love you and thank you. And that's why we are gonna start doing more exclusive long form content on this channel because you guys deserve it and we just love you. 
Okay, let's get back into the makeup. That silver was to die for. So this being a pressed glitter, I don't want it to fall out. I hope it doesn't, even if I didn't do this, but if you don't wanna use eyeshadow primer, I just like to take a setting spray. So I'm gonna take Fix Plus and spray this on the eyes where they are so far. And that will actually act as a little bit of a grip. Well, that got all in my mouth, which this is super soft, these shadows. Like if I pushed it, I could probably scoop all of this out. So I think I'd rather use a brush and I know because it's pressed as loosely as it is, it will probably pick up. Oh Jesus, yeah, that is stunning. With that silver underneath, it might be a little hard for you guys to see this on camera, but she is sticking to the lid like a dream. I'm gonna put my flashlight on and hopefully you can see a little better. Ooh. To finish off the eyes, I'm dipping into After Hours, which is the black from the After Dark palette. And I'm just gonna kind of hug the outside lash line here because I'm not gonna do liner. I really want the lashes to be the star of the show, but I love to do this little trick just to give the illusion of a liner. Look at that, look at that. And it's on the outside half of the eye. So see, it's giving that lift like two seconds. That is a good black. These mattes, man. In the shimmers. I don't know, y'all. I think Miss Mattel did a little something special reformulation-wise. Maybe not. Maybe I was just sleeping on the powder eyeshadow this whole time. What do you guys think? Have you used her powder eyeshadows before? Did they blend like butter? Because these are blending like butter. That was erotic. Okay. I'm just gonna go ahead and clean up my under eyes and sharpen up this outside corner with a makeup wipe, and then I'm going to dive into the lashes, which I can tell ya, the first thing I noticed when I opened up this PR box was um, the lashes look erotic. You know how I'm always saying on the pod, my favorite kind of lash is something that is longer on the outside half and shorter on the inside half to give me that flair. <laughs> Wait till you see this up close. Eyes are done for now, and to make sure that glitter doesn't fall out on me, I think I'm gonna use a little of the one size spray, you know, Kevin and I are obsessed with to kind of lock her in. And now for the life-size lashes. These are in Foxy Lashes. I'm almost positive is the cut. Look at how they're shorter on the inside and flare out on the outside. This is my exact kind of favorite lash. Now I'm just gonna take my clear duo lash glue, paint the band. And I normally wait about 60 seconds for that glue to get tacky. So when I put it on the eye, she doesn't slip and slide. Oh my God, I didn't put mascara on. All right, all right, move quickly. Oh, that was a close call. Look at the lashes. Holy sweetie, darling, toots. Look at the lashes. These exceeded expectations. I am gonna have to take very good care of these and keep them super pristine in the box because these are stunning. Just primed with a little of the Dior Forever Matte Primer. And now I'm gonna go in with, can you guys believe this? Dior Air Flash. Talk about a relic. I don't know why they ever discontinued this. It is stunning. And you wanna talk about how insane Kevin is. I just said to him the other week, I was like, I can't believe I use Dior Air Flash on clients all the time, especially when we work together at Sephora, but I never tried it on myself. And me in recent years, having became a Dior fanatic for complexion, as you're always hearing me talk about, I was like, I never got to try it on myself. And he goes, oh, I have some. It, it could Something could have been discontinued 50 years ago and he's like, oh, I have nine bottles. So he brought me over that and my self tan shade because besties, he knows me. Now I'm gonna reinforce the bronzer contour moment with the Trixie Cosmetics Flower Power Bronzer. I love this, especially the lighter shade. I just love that you're getting two shades here. My review of this is what got me featured on Trixie's channel, which that was pretty surreal. I'm gonna say what I said, which is why she refeatured it. Very rarely when I'm doing my contour or bronzer, am I using one shade for dimension? So I always start with the first shade and I'm more liberal with it to get kind of blended edges right from the start. And I love the neutral tones of both of these. It's not too warm and it's not too cool. To me, it's a one and done product if you're not in the mood to do a bronzer and then a contour because it just is like, this is it, you know what I mean? And I think it's the same thing with her cream bronzers. It, it's the same neutral tone to everything. But then if you want a little more dimension, I dip into the darker 
and I super deep down in the pockets here. I'm much more conservative with that just to add dimension as we go down and really sculpt out these cheekbones and areas I want to be a little bit more defined. For blush, I'm gonna use the Trixie Cosmetics Show Pony Blush. This was part of the, what was it, the Horse Girls collection? And this was the first single pan blush. It's a little warmer than the eyes, but I think she gonna work. Okay, whoa, pigment. Definitely tap that off. Ooh, okay. We're gonna candy muse it with uh, blush today. This formula is definitely more powdery. Not that it's patchy, but I think you just gotta be very intentional with where you put it. But honestly, I mean, my skin is so textured, if you will, or rougher that rarely do I not have to do what I'm about to do anyway, which is dip into my one size powder and use this to blur the edges of my blush. I always do this just to kind of make everything look super airbrushed and seamless anyway. I would just maybe be wary of that blush if you have mature skin, but I will say I have one of her blush palettes and I don't remember it necessarily kind of being that powdery, but still that is very pretty. It's time for the cream highlighters. We have Beep Beep is the more pinky and then Toot Toot is the more silver. Here they are swatched on the hand. That is beep beep. That pink is stunning. And toot toot is the silver. Look at that guys. Beep beep. This pink literally looks like a cream version of the house labs. I'm gonna take this on my finger and just press her nice and high on the cheekbone. Ha! Oh. Wow, I wanna show you Beep Beep mainly because I'm pretty sure Toot Toot is sold out. That sounds so funny saying that. <laughs> wow, wow, whole oh boy. I mean, guys, wet. Wow, that is like very creamy. I almost wonder if I take a hair of translucent powder and just set it. Wow, look, I'm setting it with a powder so I know it's not gonna move around on me. And look, it's not taking away any of the glow, but it's just making it look a little less wet, if that makes sense. Wow, y'all, don't sleep on beat beat here. I do gotta use this toot toot up on my hand, so I'm gonna use that for the Cupid's bow. I did not expect to like those that much, because I'm not a massive fan of cream highlighter. You guys know I'm like a ride or die with my Rare Beauty, the positive light highlighters, but, uh. Wow, Kevin is gonna lose his mind over these. Now to finish up the eyes, I'm going in with the first shade we went in, which was 12 inch single. And I'm just gonna do this on the lower lash line, about 85, 90% of the way in. And for that, I'm using a nice pinched brush. And then I'm doing a little bit of the hustle, the darker pink on the lash line, only halfway in. And I always keep a fluffy brush next to me that has nothing on it just to blend. Now I'm gonna take that silver fox again in the nighttime one and use that to highlight my inner corner. Oh my girl, this is sick. Look at that. A little mascara on the bottom lash line. I use this LYS Lash Confidence Mascara. She ain't it. In a panic of forgetting to put mascara on, I just grabbed this. I don't like that curved brush and it honestly felt like I was putting like just black water on my lashes. It did nothing for them. So I'm gonna use my KVD full sleeve. All right, for lips, I'm gonna use Anastasia Lip Liner in Deep Taupe. Before I use Lollipop Lux, I wanna use something that's gonna brighten the inside up so this pops a little bit. And I'm gonna use, you talk about vintage. If you watch the episode where Kevin and I talked about how we wanna go to the Bite Beauty Lab and uh, make our favorite nudes, this is the one I was talking about. This is the Burberry Liquid Lipsticks that they haven't made for years and this is the one I want to match because when you see this in the center, girl, girl, the cool tone nude. All right, we're gonna bring a little bit of life into this with the Lollipop Lux. Ooh, I knew she would mix with her perfectly. Girl. I set my skin with the Little Fix Plus. I wish I had the Trixie setting spray and priming spray. I gave them to Kevin. So I will have to ask Kevin next week what he thinks of them. Here we have the final look using the Solid Pink Disco Collection. I gotta tell you, I'm rarely not impressed with the Trixie product, but I will say I was super nervous to use the powder 
eyeshadows because I've heard mixed reviews. I don't know what's going on in these, but uh, these are stunning, mama. Like, I can't believe I don't have a liquid eyeshadow on. The lashes are erotic. The blush from the Horse Girl collection was a little powdery, but we made it work. The cream highlighters are disgustingly beautiful. Like I said, I'm pretty sure to toot the silver is sold out, but y'all don't sleep on beep beep. Look at, it's not like pink pink, it's uh, uh. The silver in the Disco After Dark is as good as Natasha Denona and the lip girl. I was kind of nervous, to be honest with you. You know I like a bold eye and a nude lip and this, I was like, oh God, this is Kevin's tea, this isn't mine. It mixed with that Burberry so beautifully. Girl, the verdict is in. The Solid Pink Disco Collection from Trixie Cosmetics is a slam dunk for me. I did not dislike one thing in here. Like I said, the only thing that was a little wonky for me was the blush, but that was part of the Horse Girl collection. This entire collection is what everything was perfect. Thank you guys so much for watching the very first piece of exclusive content on the Beautiful and Bothered channel. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. We have a lot of fun over here. There is a new podcast episode out every single Sunday with new exclusive content launching all week. Wherever you guys are, I hope you are happy, safe, and healthy. And remember, Oh, he's not here. You are beautiful. Bye, guys.